usually on the channel we focus on ultra budget builds but in today's video we're going to be building something a little bit more high end a little bit more premium and i have to admit i couldn't wait to get my hands on intel's brand new alder lake cpus so i decided to go with the intel i7 12700kf and i wanted to pair it up with something decent so i went with the Oris elite rtx 3060. Intel is finally off the 14 nanometer architecture, and in my opinion, this is Intel's most important release in over a decade. But why is this so important, and is it any good? Those answers coming up next. Welcome back to Tech215. I'm your host, Nick, and I'm pretty pumped for today's video. Finally, graphics card prices have come back down to earth. They're almost at that normal point. We're getting so close. And in today's video, I have the brand new Alder Lake CPU, the i7 12700KF that I'm pairing it up with the RTX 3060. I mean, after years of innovation stagnation from Intel and also a rising competitor in AMD right on their heels, I was really excited to see how Intel would respond Spawn. But for all you guys out there who don't know why this is such a big deal for Intel, let's first take a trip back in time to the year 2008. So you see, before AMD's Ryzen CPUs were a global phenomenon, Intel was dominating the CPU wars with its highly successful line of Core i processors. Intel Core i5s and i7s debuted in 2008 and was an immediate success, with 2010's flagship i7 980X leading the pack. Intel would approve upon the success and with 2011's Sandy Bridge and 2012's Ivy Bridge line of CPUs shrinking down from 45 nanometers to a much improved 32 nanometer on Sandy Bridge and, and 22 nanometer on Ivy Bridge. Intel would do much of the same with their next two releases, 2013's Haswell series, which featured great mid-range CPUs like the i5-4570 and the flagship i7-4770K, and Intel would be the first to utilize DDR4 memory in 2014 with its fifth generation Haswell E on the X99 platform. After numerous successful CPU launches consisting of performance increases and a consistent reduction in die size, Intel was on cruise control as they would continue to beat out competitor AMD in gaming and production workloads. However, when Intel geared up for its initial 14 nanometer offering in 2015 named Skylake, Intel had no idea about the limitations the 14 nanometer node would offer as well as the competition its longtime rival AMD would present. Meanwhile, over at Team Red's headquarters, AMD and Chief Executive Officer Lisa Su were developing something big and were poised for a resurgence with their latest CPU architecture, Ryzen. Designed by AMD engineers and fabricated by Global Foundries, Ryzen's big featurettes would consist of high core count CPUs stacked with large amount of super fast cache while also being power efficient and affordable. Zen Plus would release a year later with an incremental die shrink to 12 nanometers, bringing it highly improved cache and memory latency and a big jump in IPC gain. But the stake AMD would drive through Intel's heart would be its third iteration, Zen 2. Thanks to new fabrication partner TSMC, AMD heavily reduced their already impressive 12 nanometer die all the way down to seven nanometers. This is when AMD really put things in the high gear and were able to stand toe to toe with Team Blue. AMD's cheaper price and newer technology would severely cut into Intel's market share and finally force Intel off their tired 14 nanometer architecture after its final iteration in 2020, Intel 11th gen Rocket Lake. So that leads us to Intel's brand new architecture, Alder Lake S, which came out in November of 2021. It's first brand new architecture in five generations. It's actually a 10 nanometer super thin architecture, but Intel's calling it Intel 7 because AMD is on seven nanometer. Intel really wants to get back at AMD because they had no idea how successful AMD's Ryzen was gonna be. Representing Intel's Alter Lake CPU today is the i7-12700KF. It features eight Golden Cove performance cores and four Gracemont efficiency cores. A truly unique architecture where the P cores do all the heavy lifting, while the E cores perform the easier to run background tasks, along with Intel's new thread director technology, a feature only available in Windows 11, has the E cores shuffling around and prioritizing what the P and E cores do to get maximum performance. The P-Cores have a base clock speed of 3.6 GHz and a turbo speed of 5 GHz, while the efficiency cores have a base clock speed of 2.7 GHz with a turbo of 3.8 GHz. And yes, all those cores are overclockable. 
Intel's famous bi-directional ring bus together with 25 megabytes of level 3 cache connects the P-cores and the E-core clusters, resulting in a 28% increase in IPC versus Skylake cores and a 19% uplift over 11th gen's Cypress Cove cores, which is really what makes this release so exciting. Now, all Alder Lake CPUs have a dual mode memory controller that supports DDR5 and DDR4. However, you will not be able to mix and match memory on the same board, and the die has been totally reinvented for socket LGA 1700. It also has a thinner STIM and a thicker copper IHS for better heat dissipation. And the 12700KF has a ton of high speed PCI Express lanes, 20 to be exact, 16 are Gen 4, and the other four are Gen 5. I recorded this video in May of 2022. There are no PCI Express Gen 5 devices out there, but at least when the time comes, the i7 12700KF will be ready. It finally looks like Intel has something new and exciting to offer PC gamers and content creators. And the best part is the i7-12700KF in with an MSRP of 396 bucks, putting Intel officially back in the game, giving the high-end Ryzen 9, 5900X, and 5950X a run for its money. Now on to the rest of our build, and our motherboard is an absolute stunner. The Z690 Aorus Elite AX DDR4 version. It features a 16 plus 1 plus 2 direct digital VRM with premium cooling 3 m.2 slots for mvme drives comes with native wi-fi 6 and a 2.5 gigabit lamp port for our graphics card we have the aorus elite rtx 3060 12 gigabyte model which is a triple fan card that absolutely looks great and matches our motherboard we have 32 gigabytes of corsair dominator platinum clocked at 3600 megahertz a samsung evo 980 pro 1 terabyte mvme drive and to keep our alder lake i7 cool we have the 280 mil Corsair H115i Elite Capellex AIO. Now powering our system is the Corsair RM750X Gold Rated Power Supply, and all this beautiful hardware is sitting in the Leon Lee Landcool 215, resulting in a super crisp and clean aesthetic. So now it's time to run some benchmarks, but first, here's a quick hardware recap. First up, we got Geekbench 5. The 12700KF scored a 1953 in single core, 68% faster than the 3800X, and in multi core, the 12700KF scored a blistering 13,920, 57% faster than the Ryzen 7's 8,883. Finally, the 3060 12GB is 28% faster than the 2066 gig, a trend I think you guys will continue to see between these GPUs in this video. Next is 3D Mark's Time Spy, which uses DirectX 12, and we got a total score of 9206 over the 3800X system's 7694. The CPU score was an absolute blowout, 16,880 points to 9840, a 72% uplift over the 3800X, but it was a lot closer in the graphics score department, 8,098 for the 3060 12 gig to the 2060 7409, only a 9% increase. And finally, for all you video editors out there using Adobe Premiere, we have Pugent Systems Premiere Pro Benchmark and the 12700KF3060 combo scored a whopping 970, making it 53% faster over the R7 2060 combos 635, a combination of hardware that won't destroy your budget, but will offer amazing performance. On the games, and we'll be mixing in extremely demanding titles and easier to run games. First up, a super tough one, Red Dead Redemption 2. At 1080p ultra settings maxed out, we got an average of 65 FPS, and at 1440p, we were just under 60 FPS, but turning down the settings to high would offer a lot more frames, as at 1080p high settings, we averaged 93 FPS. A very solid start for the Alder Lake and Ampere Duo. Forza 5 at 1080p maxed out settings again, 101 average FPS, and at 1440p we got 79 average FPS. It was a very smooth experience speeding around the track in this visually impressive racer from Microsoft Studios. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is up next and maxed out at 1080p once again. We got over 120 FPS, perfect for those high refresh rate monitors, and a very impressive 95 FPS at 1440p. The heavily anticipated and notoriously bad optimized title Elden Ring is next, and at 1080p maxed out settings, we got a very smooth and impressive experience with 80 average FPS, and at 1440p maxed out, we were just shy of the 60 FPS mark, hitting 58 FPS, 
These are scores that would bring a smile to George R.R. R. Martin's face. And finally, EA's infamous Battlefield 2042, maxed out at 1080p, we got an average of 101 FPS in this extremely smooth and visually impressive first person shooter, while in 1440p, we were just able to hit above the 60 FPS mark with 63 average FPS and a 1% low of 58 FPS. All right guys, time to wrap this up. All right guys, so it's conclusion time here on the channel. We saw the breakdowns, we saw the benchmarks. Let me give you guys what I think of the i7 12700KF. Buy the i7 12700KF, or should you stick with Ryzen and go with something like a 5800X or a 5900X or even a 5950X? The bottom line is this. I think the i7 12700KF is really well priced at around the $380 mark. And if I was to upgrade or buy a new PC right now with the intent on video editing and production workloads, sort of like what I do anyway, I would go with the 12700KF. Now, if you already have a decent AM4 motherboard that will support Zen 3, which is the 5000 series of Ryzen CPUs, then I would absolutely stick to getting a 5800X, 5900 or 5950X because you won't have to buy a new motherboard and you'll already have the memory. If your primary function is gaming but you also want to do a little bit of video editing you also want to stream going with the i7 12700 kf is a no-brainer and one of the reasons i thought that this was such an important release for intel was because amd has been kicking so much butt over the last couple years they really have become the king when it comes to gaming and production workloads and i really think that when all three companies that's amd nvidia and intel are all challenging each other for space even though nvidia don't make cpus just yet but when they're all competing for your business you get the best products and you get the best prices so that's why I was super excited and I also kind of wanted to see a new contender come up the rise It's weird seeing someone like Intel down for very long, but guys, that's all the time I got for today Thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video Give it a thumbs up and drop a comment. I'm curious what you guys think of the i7 12700k. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It really helps the channel out. If you guys were building a brand new high-end system tomorrow, would you go Intel or would you go AMD? I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Follow me on Instagram at tech underscore 215 underscore. I'm constantly posting updates about new hardware I get and about the channel. To check out my ultra budget builds playlist. And remember guys, until the next time, just build it. Peace.